That's what our next guest is fighting for in this campaign. She is a veteran. She is an engineer. She is the candidate for the 6th District for Congress here in Pennsylvania. Please welcome Chrissy Houlihan. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Of course. So, uh, it says here on my card that you're an engineer. I am. A veteran. I am. A teacher. I have been. Uh, you've been involved in business. I have done that too. You're a woman. Evidence, yeah. If you ever became a nurse, you'd basically hit every democratic <laughs> sweet spot. Have you considered nursing at all? Oh, my brother's a nurse. Oh, really? Good, yeah, good, it's so covered, it's one. covered. <laughs> But you also said that you've never considered running for office before until this campaign, until exactly. this until this season. Exactly. What is it just the Trump effect? What led you to decide this was the time to run for office? So I, in addition to being a veteran, I'm a third generation vet. And my dad and my grandfather served. And I was absolutely raised to respect the dem democratic process and to salute smartly after every election and to honor the commander in chief and the will of the people. But this time, for the first time, it felt very, very different to me. And I felt like that we had made uh, a difficult and wrong decision as a collective. And it was because of the reaction of my family, largely. I have a daughter who's 26 now, was 24 the evening of the election. She's gay. Uh, and in the days and weeks after the election was so undone by, the, you know, by what we had just said to each other that she wouldn't leave our house and go back to her adult life. And my dad is, in addition to being a Navy guy, is a survivor of the Holocaust, so he was a refugee. Uh, and he also was in tears the days and weeks after the election and uh, equally worried about what we had just said about the nation that he had been brought to as a very small child and uh, the opportunity that would not necessarily be provided to the next generation. Right now, the, the, uh, the Pennsylvania congressional delegation has no women in it. You would be one of several women who could be going to Congress in Pennsylvania. An historic number of women are running. Is that purely a response to Trump? What was the tipping point that you think led so many women in this campaign to sort of run for office? So I obviously can't comment for all women, uh, but I can comment for me. Why, um, why not? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can say that for me, it was the realization that we were in peril, uh, that I had skills uh, and qualifications that would be useful, and that if the current president could win, then who had very few qualifications, in my opinion, uh, that I could certainly give it a try and be equally as good as he could at this, I thought. I think that's a really low bar. <laughs> it is. I think being as good at Donald Trump is, is a very low bar. It is a super low bar, and it gets even lower and lower every day. <laughs> So you've achieved a lot in your life. You've also faced adversity. Uh, you married someone whose name is Bart, yes. uh, which I think has probably really like, been a challenge. It, yeah. uh, <laughs> um, but you love him. You love him despite that he, you, he, you love someone named Bart. I do. I do. I've loved him for 32 years. Yesterday was our first date. Oh, wow. OK. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're talking about health care. We're talking about economic issues tonight. We're talking about how we can get back to that topic, but Trump wants to talk about the caravan. A lot of Republicans want to talk about the caravan. We've seen the tax cuts on popular, so they're talking about MS-13. What are you seeing on the ground with your field team? Are you getting asked about the caravan, and how do you respond when you are asked about it? So I've been running for Congress for 633 days. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I have 11 more days, including today, to finish the conversation that we started 633 days ago. But from the beginning until today, the conversation has about been the issues of our community. Health care, quality, affordable, accessible health care for everyone. Uh, great, terrific jobs that treat one another with dignity, uh, equal pay, living wage, those sort of conversations, and terrific e educational opportunities for everyone. Those are the issues of our community, and they are very, very rarely the issues that our president would like to elevate. But so are you, like, you know, there's this question, right? This is going to make a difference. You know, people want to hear about, that, you know, Trump has said it's about Kavanaugh and the caravan. You're out there. Are people asking you about it? Is it coming up at all? You're really not, you don't think you're, you're not hearing it. No, I mean, I think, frankly, we are a nation of laws. This is an issue that we need to be thinking about. We do need a bipartisan solution to the immigration issue. Uh, and that has clearly been a flaw, both of the Republicans and the Democrats. We haven't been able to find our way to do that. Uh, but in, we are also a nation of heart. And I think that in my community in particular, we understand that this is just uh, a ploy. 
frankly, to be to, to tear each other apart. And the largest issue at, at the door is not just health care, education, and jobs. Is even though it was sort of uh, in some ways derided earlier, decency, you know, civility is really genuinely an issue at the doors. We really do care about that, uh, and that comes up just as often as any of the other major issues. That's interesting. So you're you're actually hearing about people are raising raising at the tenor of our politics. Oh, absolutely. And do you think Democrats? Look, we are we have a position on this issue. We're pro. We're pro, but no, but no, but yeah. but do you think that this message that you hear, which is that both sides do it, both sides are to blame? I mean, look, the country's going through something. You're running for office in yeah. part because of the response to someone yeah. like Donald Trump becoming president. To some, to me, I think if you're worried about democratic civility, you're missing the story. But is that? But but am I wrong about that? Is do you think that this question about tone is something that people want to see more from? On well, Democrats, I, from Democrats. Well, from everyone. We want to see it from everyone. I, I think when you're talking to moms and they're and they're worried about the messages that are being sent to their kids about how you behave in in the world, I think that that's uh, alarming. And I think that a lot of the people who are are being brought to the to our side are those independents, others, Republicans who are thinking, you know, I've had it. I'm done. You know, this is not the country that I that I want to raise my kids in. And I think it really is an issue. Yeah. Uh, so we're in the final stretch, the home stretch. I recently got into some trouble. Yes. Uh, with the people of Pennsylvania. We have issues to speak of. Uh, now, <laughs> so I made a joke, and the joke was, how, when Trump was saying we were organizing the caravan, how could we be organizing voters in, in Central America? We can barely organize voters in Pennsylvania. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I was under the impression that Hillary Clinton lost this state. <laughs> yeah, not Philly. <laughs> So this led to a lot of people saying that they should try to prove love it wrong. Yes. Uh, how's that been I going? I have some data for you. OK. Um, because, I'm an engineer, because I'm an engineer. Because you're an engineer. Exactly. And I like truth matters. The truth. Facts matter. Just barely it um, still matters. So what I have here, early reports are that we have in 2018 knocked more doors than total 2010 and 2014 already. Really? In Pennsylvania. And we have 10 more days to go. So we've yeah. already beat the combined amounts of 2010 and 2014. Last weekend alone, we knocked 200,000 doors in Pennsylvania. And in my district, we knocked 25,000 doors last weekend alone. Wow. So 25,000 do doors were knocked in Pennsylvania, and you weren't there. <laughs> and Boom, I, I, don't care. I was just wondering if you might want to show up this time around, maybe tomorrow, and uh, launch a canvas with me. I want you to imagine. I want you to imagine a world in which I'm not going to say yes to that question. <laughs> yes, I would yeah, love to join yeah, you on a canvas. Yeah. Before we let you go, uh, now. You've had this incredible experience serving the country. You've been an engineer. You've been a teacher. But you've also been involved in a successful business. Yes. And, we, and it was a clothing company. Yes. So we wanted to run some t-shirt ideas by you <laughs> that we thought might help the campaign. But also, you need to make sure that they make good business sense. Sure. OK, so we have sure. three options for you. OK, let's show the first one. Uh, uh, this one is uh, Hulahan is Coolahan. <laughs> OK. <laughs> uh, then we have, we have a second option. Hey, Pennsylvania, don't let us down this time. <laughs> Contentious, but a, but a response, yeah, right? Yeah. You can get a hate sales. <laughs> All right, and, and a third option, Chrissy Houlihan. Her husband's name is Bart, and she loves him anyway. <laughs> so you can decide. You don't have to decide right now, but just consider it. Which one do you I, think? I would advise that you not quit your day job. I, I'm not <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> But I definitely like the first one. Okay, good. All right, good. We have a choice. <laughs> All right, guys, give it up for Chrissy Houlihan.